I'm going to ask it again. Okay. Oh, but we got this recording. Perfect. All right. So here is the deal. Uh, you're ignoring me. I started, my husband and I, our first few years in real estate, and we, was that on camera? We had a very heavy prospect, prospecting based business. And um, which meant we got in our office every day, we put headphones on, headset on, and we dialed every for sale by owner, every buyer. We circle prospected around new listings. We circle prospected around open houses. We literally called strangers day in and day out. Now, the good side of that is after three years, we our third year business, we sold 109 houses. Okay, like that year, which was really awesome. Yet at the end of that year, I said, this is absolutely no fun. And I do not enjoy getting yelled at every day. And my husband and I said, well, why don't we look at the database side of the business? Okay, um, working with people who already know us, trust us, like us. Well, this is basically how to use your database or your social media database um, and at the same time provide value to the people that are in your database, okay? Uh, 10 years ago, my husband and I owned zero rental properties, okay? None, we knew nothing about it. And um, we feel like it's part of our responsibility as real estate professionals to show people how they can create wealth through investing in real estate, okay? It is so simple to invest in real estate. The options uh, are endless, okay? They're, the possibilities are endless. Um, how many of you have ever listened to uh, Bigger Pockets uh, podcast? Okay, if you haven't, on your notes or your handouts that you have, um, write it down, Bigger Pockets. <laughs> Put that on your first thing. Okay, your, your first to do from the class and see next. I think it's the postage says with me. Is listen to Bigger Pockets uh, podcast. That's a great one. Another one on Facebook um, is called the B R R R uh, Facebook group, which is basically it's buy, rehab, renovate. Uh, refinance and resell, or, or no, and then and then buy your next, reinvest, buy your next one. Okay, um, here's why I brought those two up right now on bigger pockets and on BRRRR. Say that fast twenty times. Um, you will hear about. I'm a 23 year old, and I just bought my 94th door. I am a career um, janitor for the Walsingham School District in New England, and I have 45 doors, okay? It is 100% the American dream, and it is totally possible, okay? The reason why people don't get into it is fear, limiting beliefs. fear, limiting beliefs, and lack of knowledge. The reason that most people have fear around investing in real estate is just a lack of knowledge, which is where you come in, okay? Uh, and this is a lead generation tool. So I have been telling our real estate team in Tampa, sure, I'll do an investing workshop. And by the way, write this website down, Keller Inc, I-N-K, kellerinc.com, which this genius slide deck the participant packet or handout that you have. Uh, it's all on. Okay. Yep. This is the slide deck that you're, you're I'm actually flip through today. Okay. This is the handout that you're going to give to the attendees of your seminar. Okay. I did it last week on Zoom. I highly, 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 highly recommend do it in person. Use our training room. Host an event here. We would love for you to leverage being a part of this office by using our space, okay? Um, and then this is also um, on the Keller Ring website. This is what I want to start with today. Okay, this little unsexy packet, okay? It's a little black and white packet on top. It was the third one. The reason you don't see it in the slide deck is this is just for you not the participants, okay? This is the advice, and some of it is, 
I've I've tried in my mind to imagine who wrote this, and I'm thinking it was Dave Jenks. I was thinking that looks like Dave Jenks, who co-authored this book with Gary Keller, and he just had a very straight shooter, funny, didn't really watch his words very much kind of personality, and he's bigger than life. Because he says, hey, partner with the lender, but you better tell him he's got about two minutes to talk and then pull it. And then it says, you can provide snacks, but I, I don't recommend it because that's a waste of time. And thinking, I thought cocktails would be a great idea. Okay. Uh, anyway, so here is uh, straight from the website, the investor workshop, the purpose of it, how to promote it, preparing to deliver it, and then presenting. Okay, um, I don't have these slides up because remember, this was just, uh, it's kind of your guide. So flip over to page three, the introduction of the investor workshop. This is truly, and I want you to circle that for entry level investors from curious to qualified. It's on the slide, page number three. Um, when I promoted ours on social media, I re repeatedly said, this is an entry level how to get started investing in real estate. So see at the top, is investing in real estate for you? There's a, um, you know, a, a message within that that basically said, hey, I'm not going to talk about buying 100 doors in your first year. That's not what this is, okay? Um, so make sure people understand that it is an entry-level workshop. It is based on this book right here, The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. How many of you have read this? That is a first step, okay? Good, solid first step. Um, it is on Audible. So if you like to walk and listen, that's what I love to do. Um, it's on Audible. And I would recommend listen to this book over and over and over. Um, you can be the most savvy investor in the world by mastering these principles. Gary Keller lays out how to create your formula for investing based on your risk tolerance, how, what type of investment, how to get the deals coming in the front end, how to, in, how to uh, negotiate a great investment opportunity. I mean, it is literally, uh, it's pretty high level. Some of it, some of the math that's in here, the target groups, uh, balance sheets. I mean, this is a fantastic resource for you. Okay. So, um, I would know this inside and out. You don't need it for this workshop though, okay? This is very uh, beginning level information in the workshop. All right, purpose of this workshop, flip over to page number four. The overall goal of this is truly for you to gain investor buyers and referral partners, okay? Um, so last week I did do it on Zoom and I had 70 or so people register online and then about 35 to 40 that showed up and you know about half of them were real estate agents and then half of them were local so my husband and I live in Tampa we're local to the Tampa market um, from that we've already had three pieces of business one was a referral that we sent out of state okay um, and then the uh, which is funny the person wanted to buy a vacation rental about 25 miles from the one that we own in North Georgia. She has seen me post our cabin in North Georgia. Hey, it's open this summer, book our cabin. She's seen me post that, I don't know how many times. She was a friend from college. Never once did she engage on a post and tell me I'm interested in investing. Maybe she doesn't want to stay in my cabin. Maybe she doesn't like my cabin. Maybe she thinks it's ugly. I don't know. However, this one little lead gen strategy got her to raise her hand and for me to get a 25% referral fee on a half a million dollar purchase she was about to make. I would have never been involved in that. She would have Googled realtor in this area. Um, so anyway, that's one. And then we had two direct people that uh, were investors that said, hey, we want to purchase. Um, the way that we did it online, I really recommend in person because then you're there. You can actually pull up some properties. You can look at some on the big screen. The way that I divided it up online, um, and Dee, this might be great for your team with like the relationship with so many different agents. I said, if you are a real estate professional and you would like to host a similar seminar, um, you know, in Zoom, you can choose breakout rooms. And so it lets people get into smaller groups. I said, if you're a real estate professional, stay on. I'd love to answer any questions you have about hosting a seminar like this. Um, the mortgage partner that we had um, 
there who's really helped us with all of our purchases. Um, I said, if you have questions about financing, whether you're a realtor or a purchaser, um, Jamie will be in breakout room too. And then if you have plans to invest anytime in the future, it doesn't have to be right now, it could be three years down the road, uh, click on breakout room three and my husband, Brooke and Dondra, they will be there to have a little chat, a discussion, and we're open for any questions. It worked out really well, okay? The whole webinar was about an hour and 15 minutes, and then that breakout time for us was about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, the lending one, I kept texting, Jamie, are you okay? Everything all right? They kept staying with financing questions for even 20 minutes beyond the allotted time. So I would recommend when you do this in person, um, partner with a lender that has worked with investors, that can answer questions, that can give people options. And even if they don't work with like hard money lenders, if they want to do a, a rehab property, that they know the people to connect them with. Okay, Jamie was really helpful for me um, on the lending side. Okay, um, so that worked out really well. And um, I mean, that's three pieces of business that we wouldn't have likely created because we weren't top of mind. Okay, um, so the purpose of the workshop is um, to educate people on investing. By the way, you can see right there, MREI flip and also hold so if you want to teach people a hold seminar, it's all on Keller Inc. Okay, so that's a, somebody that's going to invest and hold the property. Um, if you want to teach MREI flip, the PowerPoint is there. You can become a local expert in whatever you're interested in. Okay, and I bet on YouTube, you can find a video of someone doing the seminar that you can learn and practice before you do it on your own. Um, or let me know and I can deliver it and then we'll learn together. Okay, so it's lead generation. We've talked about this. Um, they recommend doing it once a month. Um, we are doing at least something monthly. Last time, last month we did a first time home buyer seminar. This month we did or we did the MREI seminar. This one uh, next month we're doing a seller seminar, and the seller seminar is basically about you know um, you know how to prepare your home for the market, maybe staging information. You know, how do we sell properties? What's the process like? We do this a lot. The general public has a lot of questions and they don't know, they don't know all their options, okay? Um, Sue Adler is a real estate agent who's doing these seller workshops and she is, I mean, she sells hundreds of homes a year. And the ones that you're doing it all on Zoom as well or do those uh, so we did the first time home buyer seminar on Zoom. I did this one on Zoom. Our next one is in person. Like it is just such a different feel. I know there were so many questions I couldn't answer, you know, and it's a little bit awkward. And then people turn their cameras off. That was something at the start of it. So the advantage of doing a Zoom, of course, is that you get people that, that can't get to you and yeah. you are reaching out. Like, for example, like a lot of my contacts are necessarily here in Naples. So, like, mm -hmm. doing the Zoom thing might help me reach some of those other sure. people. And sure. Yeah, that's this problem we both do the Do one in person and then, you know, a couple of days back later, I do the Zoom for the ones that put it in hand. And <laughs> yeah, flip it back and forth. I did mine at 12 30 in the afternoon because I kind of thought, hey, it's their lunch break or, you know, I would recommend doing it in the evening. Did you cover, I'm sorry, for, did you cover how you invite all the people, all the strategies? Uh, so I did a Facebook post um, two weeks out. And then I did another Facebook post about a week and a half out. And then I did leading up the week of a Facebook post every single day. Those paid campaigns or just, no, just, just your contacts? Just our contacts. Just whoever was on our, on our social media. Um, and one thing that uh, we did too is we created a Facebook event so that I kind of had an idea of how many people were going to be in there to keep track of it. Um, a couple of little tips that I would recommend if you do do it online. That... It, and when I started, I said, hey, please click on the sign in link so that I can make sure to invite you to the next workshop. And almost every single person that was on there filled it out. And it gave me their name, their address, 
their phone number, their email. Are you a realtor? Yes or no. Do you know anyone that we can be serving? So asking for a referral. And then the last one is, are you thinking, are you interested in investing? And then they would say yes. So then our team had follow-up based on areas. And so while we had three immediate pieces of business, likely we have a big pipeline for the future, okay? Um, we also did, uh, I did a Facebook Live. I did a video around it, inviting people. Uh, that always helps. And here's how I, here's how I really set it up. Okay, you guys, social media is great for the good that it can do. And when you can take advantage of it, it's even better. So we we do invest in real estate. And, you know, one day my kids had off of school and we're at a rental property and I'm painting. I've got like paint in my hair. My 13 year old says, mom, I want to earn some money. Great. Grab the screwdriver and come assemble some beds and Ikea furniture and all this stuff. And I snap pictures of them. My husband's like coughing in a bathtub and I put it on social media knowing I was going to do this in February. And I said, uh, you know, we're teaching them young how to build wealth through real estate. Would you be interested if I ever offered a class on how to invest in real estate? comments yes invite me all of this so we did go back to each of those people and send them a private message anybody who had commented and said Amber's you know I'm going to do this webinar please feel free to join us so it's that natural first organic post that actually created I think some of the buzz around the class okay so maybe you're showing one Maybe you're showing a property if it's not your own investment. Maybe you're interviewing an investor on social media. I would do something to kind of prime the pump a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> great question. Any other questions? Maybe not questions, but you know what? Maybe a suggestion. If you partner a company with a lender, the mm -hmm. name, right? Yeah. Because my lender that I partner up a lot, she does many events once a month mm -hmm. for different vendors and she sends home invitation. That's great. She does like it all. Like I every month I receive an invitation from her, even though I I, I know that I'm gonna see her in two days. Yeah. Still. Yeah. So maybe like a partnering up would be other way to get you. For sure. So lend so mortgage, title, um, you know, any I think any vendor would be great because they can provide it says no snacks or whatever. They can provide the snacks, the cocktail, you know, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. One thing I would recommend is um, buy this book. I think it's just a really, um, I just think it's a really quality gesture. You know, thank you for coming. Here's a gift. And you can open it up, stamp your information right on the inside. You can see how old it is. This was before the state made us rebrand and get rid of realty. I mean, it's an old book that we've had for a long time. Um, yet it can have your contact information so that every time they think about investing, you're right there. Okay. Uh, promoting it, preparing for it. Um, again, just coloring.com. Uh, this is super self-explanatory, so I'm not going to bore you with all the details of it. Um, again, just read through this. I would recommend while you're there, um, check in with people, make sure they're following or tracking with you. Does anybody have any questions? You know, dress professionally, have your buyer broker agreements with you, you know, and say, hey, you know, if you're ready, to put me to work for you. Let's schedule a time that we can sit down maybe tomorrow or the next day, look at some opportunities. That'll give you time to do research and ask them to sign the buyer broker agreement with you. Okay. All right. So that's that. This is kind of the how to part. Read that. There's a ton of great details that I'm not even, you know, hopping into yet. Uh, another <laughs> Yes. Sorry. No, I love, yes, I love that. You know what uh, about that? About about you know buyer presentation. Uh, we had uh, we had one lady who would always work with a binder, and on the binder, big letters would say hot deals. So mm -hmm. you know, we, so it, it could be you know, I mean, to rent any vacant property yeah, who has been on the market for longer days, which now we can find that's out. an opportunity. On, an opportunity. Anybody who reduce the price. Mm -hmm. Anybody who you know. Um, those kind of vacant homes and have that list, a vacant home, no HOA, that reduce the price and and long, longer term on the market. Mm -hmm. And have that list. And whoever wants to sign up for that list, you know that they use it. Prime suspects are the properties. And then that's how you show your value. 
So I think that's a great idea. I would jot it down. Have some properties ready to share that evening in different price points in different areas. Now on an OS, we can look it up in these stress properties as well. Now there's an option for that after the year. That's another list. Yeah, to uh, to Dee's point, I would hold those close to the, you know, a little close to the chin because people will use you for the information that you provide. Now, I had a friend of mine, Catherine Rain, she's an agent in Miami, uh, come talk to our team yesterday about this exact topic yesterday morning about buyer agency and getting that buyer broker rep signed. And she said, <laughs> In the buyer consult, she only does the loyalty agreement at the time of contract. She does the full legal, the buyer agency uh, agreement. And she said, so what I do, it, and we do the same on our team. Uh, at the, uh, she gives them the loyalty agreement. And she said, this, this, this sh she's got a very heavy German accent. It is beautiful. And she said, this, this is like dating. We are not married, yet you cannot cheat. Okay, this is the loyalty agreement. <laughs> Is this fair? Does this make sense? And she said, if they say no, I'm not signing anything. She said, oh, no worries. No, no, no problem. Just, you'll have to find another agent. That was my British, Australian, and German. And and all, all in one, okay? In one. You get a three for one deal. That's it, that's it, that's it. She, I mean, I was dying. However, it's the mindset. Like she is a professional real estate agent. So we're not going to give them all the properties without them actually saying, yeah, D, you're hired. I'll work with you. Great. Show me. What could I invest in? You know, wet my whistle a little bit. What, what is possible? All right. Um, I love that. She is a loyalty agreement compared to the buyer, buyer brokerage. So it's totally up to you. What we like to do when we have a buyer consultation and we sit down with a buyer, we walk them through 15 to 20 minutes of kind of the home buying process what does it look like to buy with us what's the value proposition that we bring to them um you know give them an opportunity to ask questions and then we say to them listen when we work for you you're going to be a hundred percent or more whatever's possible committed to you and in return we ask for the same so when you're working with us when we're showing you properties um, that you are only working with us as a real estate professional. Um, and it, it outlines it right there. It outlines our fee um, and we ask them to sign it. Then at the time of contract, so it's, it's not a legal document. It would never stand up in court. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose is to have a placeholder in the conversation to say, I'm a professional. You hire, you're hiring me, okay? So I'm going to give you everything I have and provide a great level of service. Now, if you disagree with me and I'm not providing a great level of service, I want you to be able to cancel out of this relationship. We, on our listings, don't have a cancellation fee, a withdrawal fee. We don't have any of that because we feel like we should provide such amazing service that they would never want to work with somebody else. And if they do, then that's on us. Okay, um, so it's just a one page document. It's literally got a couple of sections. Yes, I agree. No, I don't. And if it's no, I don't. You make it your own. When you make it, it's yeah. not like you need to find. No, you just make it your own. I'm sure there's some great examples in the office. And then at the time of the actual contract, when we send them the purchase contract, that the prior broker agreement is in there and it gets signed. And that's when that gets signed. That's when that does get signed. Yeah, because it is important to do that because then that explains like, escrow deposit disputes. I mean, there's a lot more detail in that than who wants to talk about, you know, one day when you put the property under contract, if it were to fall out and if there is an escrow dispute, we get half of it. Like that's not really the first aid conversation. Right. Okay. Um, so we do that at the time. I think, I think that a lot of it is a lot of also for the mindset. Of yes. Yes. It's a mindset. They, you know, even if it's not just a moment before, they, they still, they keep mm -hmm. going to. When somebody outside of this, some realtor happened to be like doing open house and comes, are you looking at the realtor? They're going to go, yes. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I don't Eric that owns us. So he has a kind of copy that she's used in the past. And we okay. kind of modified it for us. Okay, so super. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah. 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 yeah, that's the part that I definitely have not gotten. But I guess this point, I'm sorry. I like the analogy. This is kind of like a behavior for people cheating. Yes, yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. You, you, you can look. You don't <laughs> <laughs> and I really wish I could do her accent. Okay, so that's the front. The front part is really just explaining how to host the workshop. Okay, 
Now let's flip through and you can kind of hold them at the same time. Uh, open the, um, I lay the handout and the slide deck side by side because they're related to each other. Um, a couple of things that I did ask for the Zoom was, I said, listen, if you're at work and someone's hovering, I completely understand it. If not, please have the camera on. This is a workshop. It's not a monologue, okay? So participate, ask questions, stop me if you don't understand something. Um, I did use that sign-in sheet for to get all of their information, which is really helpful. I mean, that's 50 or so of names added to the database like that, okay? And then the other thing was, um, with the <laughs> Facebook group, I put the materials the day before, and then also the day of, I dropped it about every 20 minutes my assistant did in the Zoom uh, chat, okay? And I reminded them to sign in quite a few times so that we could grow our babies, okay? Um, the realtors that were on, did they come all over? Like, didn't I just tell them? All, all over. over. Yeah. So all, all of those could be referrals. Well, yes. I mean, I and a like few of them were local realtors that I've been working to get to Keller Williams. And so, who knows? Who knows? Right. Yeah. Um, all right, so this was uh, the PowerPoint. And again, this is true. All of this is right on Kelly. You drop your picture in, you make it your own, okay? Uh, this is where you talk to them that the um, presentation is all around the book, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor. Here's some legalese. We always love to cover that in Keller Williams. Um, this is, for me, I think this is really important to do. Uh, personalize yourself a little bit, okay? share some things about you. People do business with people that they like. Uh, let them know you a little bit. So I said, oh, here's all the fun companies that we are a part of. Of course, my favorite is having four kids that are almost 14 and under. Uh, we find out about their high school entrance stuff in about a week. Oh, it is painful. And then, you know, just for fun, we thought, hey, let's get a puppy on top of all of that. So sad. I'm so sad. Um, okay, so then this slide. So I'm going to walk through this quickly. This isn't how I presented it. It's more for you to kind of feel comfortable with what it is. And then we can have questions, um, go through it. This slide was great because I, asked, I opened it up and said, hey, why are you here today? Tell me more about this. And the overwhelming answer was, I really would like to invest in real estate. I, I don't even know how to get started. I'm afraid. You know, it's interesting. That was from real estate agents as well. Yeah. Not just, you know, so don't, don't limit your thinking. If you see a realtor sign up for your workshop, let them come. Maybe they'll come work with you on your team and maybe they'll let you um, help them find an investment property. You never know. We just sold a lady's a listing last week. Um, she's a real estate agent herself. And she called my husband and Said, you know, I only do this maybe once a year, and with my own house, like I want to, I want you guys to do it because you sell hundreds. She's real estate agent. I don't know if you want to know this thing. They do that over. Yeah, exactly. They get it. Okay. Hey, Freddie, how are you? Uh, yeah. 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 You got it. Um, so we opened this up a little bit about, hey, why are you here? What caused you to start thinking about it? And then I shared, oh, Freddie, grab some, there's some handouts up here. Um, and then I said, hey, why I'm here? And I shared a little bit about the possibility slide. 10 years ago, my husband and I could count our net worth and the negatives. That'll land in a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and now today, you know, we're multimillionaires through investing in real estate. Okay. And a teacher and a firefighter can do it. Anybody can do it. Okay. So then we walk through the uh, myth understanding and Gary Keller talks about these myth understandings. They're really his fun term for myth understanding. One thing that I want you to see on their handout is they have fill in the blanks. Hey, jot, take two seconds and jot down. Why are you here today? Then it's got the outline of the class. It's got a little spot for the um, about me. Um, I took this out of ours just because who needs to see that? And then there's white. Um, then the rest of the packet is fill in the blank. So when you do your own workshop, you're going to take these words. Are yours already deleted? No. 
Okay, so when you go online and print out the resources, it's going to have the words in there, in red, all of that good stuff, so you have the answers. When you go to create it for your people, take out the answers so that they actually have to listen to you. Kind of fun. Um, did I skip over? Here, I skipped that. My, uh, fan, my fat fingers must have been moving too fast. Uh, this was a really interesting conversation. You open it up by asking the question, what is financial wealth? I mean, some people said, I'm having a lot of money, having choices, you know, kind of jumped all around. Well, the true definition is the unearned income to finance your life mission without having to work. So when Erica talks about profit share or investing in real estate, it's you're not going to work every day to create it. Okay, it's the passive money that's coming in from your investments, whether it's the stock market or investing in real estate, you're not clocking in and out to create it. Uh, and then I, of course, said, who would like to have that? And then every hand went on. Uh, the more you can ask questions and engage, you know, the more fun that it is. So then we walk through these myth understandings. Three of them are personal. And these kind of get to the 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 mindset aspect of it okay and they are i don't need to be an investor my job will take care of my financial wealth this is where this one i really took a little bit of time and it gets uncomfortable to pick apart a 401k to pick apart um that your pension plan you really believe that a pension plan is going to fund you until you are 90 years old is there, is there going to be enough money in it for you to have financial wealth? No, oftentimes people retire, have a pension, and they're still getting a job working at the Kroger, you know, or doing something because they just can't get by on social security or whatever it might be, all right? Um, the second one is, I don't need to be financially wealthy. I'm happy with what I have. Uh, this was a fun one to say, well, uh, so Matt Steves, he's collecting shoes, for kids who don't have shoes. This is why we need fin financial wealth. KW Cares, donations, supporting people. Um, I know my husband, uh, the youngest of four kids, he grew up with absolutely zero dad. Uh, to see him be able to provide for our four kids and say, you know, this public school system is not what we were looking for. We're sending you to an all boys Catholic private high school. He would have never dreamed that of being able to do that. So yes, we do need to create financial wealth to help others and also to kind of unwrite some stories and maybe your own family's uh, history, okay? I know, I know my mom was the first to graduate college out of the hills of West Virginia. And my grandma, I mean, she just is constantly like, I'm just so proud of you. So her mom, I'm just so proud of you. I mean, I don't need to know, honey. And I'm like, oh, Granny, it's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, if if that if I had never been exposed to Keller Williams, no one had ever stretched my thinking. When I'm 80 something, I might have sounded the same way. Okay. Um, the third one is it doesn't matter if I want it or need it, I just can't do it. And the truth is you can't predict that until you actually give it a shot. Okay. Um so then that, that's like the mindset myths of it. Okay, once you get past the mindset, which by the way, I would share this, 90% of success is mindset. Mm -hmm. Henry Ford said, whether you, you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Okay, so there's only three and they're more important than the rest. Okay, because you got to get the mindset right first. Then walk through some of these. Investing is complicated. It's not really complicated. There's proven systems right in this book that thousands and thousands and thousands of investors have applied. Oh, you're just listening. Okay. No, no worries. Um, there are proven systems and models that work. Okay. When you're unemotional and you really look at a deal as a deal. Okay. Um, here's the other thing too, that I talked about on this one. Investing isn't complicated. Find a niche in investing. So for my husband and I, it has been short-term vacation rentals. You can send me a short-term rental and I will tell you whether or not to buy it in about 10 minutes through a series of questions. Now, I will be 100% honest with you. 
When it comes to a hold or a flip, I'll call my business partner, Adrian Sabatino, and say, Adrian, should we buy this and flip it? And he can go, yeah, that's a good one. Now, short-term vacation rentals, he's like, I don't know, I'll Amber. Because we found our own little niches. Adrian flipped sometimes 50 houses in a year. That's all he did. Flip, 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 flip. So it doesn't have to be complicated. Find a niche that you're interested in and then go deep. I've taken more short-term rental classes. I listen to the VRBO uh, stakeholder summits. Um, any short-term rental things on uh, Bigger Pockets podcast I'm listening to. Uh, there's all kinds of great short-term rental education. Well, I've taken most of them. So the same thing is pick your area of expertise and go really deep on it, okay? Uh, the best investments require knowledge most people don't have access. And that's where you say, well, uh, as your real estate professional, I have access to information that you don't. And so between the two of us and our partnership, we'll have all the knowledge that we need, okay? Or the access to it. Investing is risky. I'll lose money. Uh, it really is not risky when you understand the numbers behind a deal, okay? Uh, successful investors are able to time the market. Yeah, right. <laughs> In successful investing, the timing finds you. So I shared with them, we closed on our eighth vacation rental in uh, July or August this year. And our interest rate is seven and a quarter, seven and a half. And I remember we were buying stuff two years ago at three and a quarter. And while some people say, you know what, I'm going to wait this out. What a real investor knows is the, the market. And I think I drew this out. Because when I said, um, that we bought at seven and a half percent. You should have seen the people. I was very judged. They were like, oh, yeah. and I drew what I'll call for you. Um, and you just show them the same thing. I say, what is this? Is going That's it. This is the real estate market. Yes, there are dips. Okay. Sometimes that are not as much fun. And then there are peaks and some dips. Yet historically over time, it is always going up. Okay. If you bought a house in the 1980s, is it worth more now than it was in the 1980s? Yeah. Yet in 1985, it might've been worth a little less than it was in 1983. You never know. Okay. Yet the trajectory is always in the right direction. Um, so the goal is to get them and hold on to them so that you have time on your side. Um, so there's no timing the market. An investor is always buying because there are always deals to be had. Um, all good investments are taken. Well, I just said, nope, there are great, there are great opportunities in every market. One thing I want to show you, and um, on Keller Inc., okay, I didn't print it out because our packet would have been this thick. There are notes that literally simplify what to say for every single one of these. They're great. Yeah, for the um, for the PowerPoint, okay? Okay, oh, another good one that I didn't mention earlier, if you're not already on it, on Facebook, Mark King, our president, he has, um, every Friday morning, he does uh, Wealth 2.0. So find Mark King on social media, and it's the his group, his Facebook page is called Wealth 2.0. It is phenomenal. He is real time in the market, what's happening with investing. Uh, it's it's really good. So that's another one. John, your investment properties in No, uh, great question. Our investment properties are from here to Colorado. And I will tell you, um, most people would say, oh my gosh, how do you even keep up with all of that? That's a lot to keep track of. Well, thank God they're spread out because when our vacation rental on Little Gasparilla Island got wiped from Hurricane Ian, I still have seven others that are producing income. So uh, many investors buy within a small radius, which you'll see that, is that on this slide? Yep, 68% of investors buy within 50 miles of their primary residence. There is a convenience factor. There's also a great risk factor in that. You know, if you get white, you get white. I coached Bold in uh, near Mexico City Beach. I had a lady in my class. And she had been an agent for probably 15, 20 years. And I lovingly said to her, and she's a top agent. And I said, I, honey, what, like, what are you doing? 
why are you here? You know how to do all this and you've been doing it for years. She said, Amber, I owned, I think it was 18, 19 properties on the beach that she had in her rental portfolio and she had zero insurance on any of them. So she said, I am starting over and I got to get back to the basics, back to grinding, back to my database. And um, anyway, so there's a risk factor being concentrated in one area. So these are some stats. You have them in your packet. You'll see I updated them because what, what is online is from 2010 or 11. Get rid of all that. Okay. I'm on page 17 in mine. Yeah. Oh, on the uh, participant packet. Great question. Uh, bottom, yeah, bottom of page five. Okay. This is what's online. I updated it in my PowerPoint though. Okay. Um, and so you're going to want to update it with some national stats. And then you'll see here I went local. Okay. Uh, actually, this one was national too. And then Tampa statistics. Here's where I talked about the opportunity to be an investor in Tampa Bay. Well, you'll do the same thing to be an investor in, you know, Fort Myers, Bonita, Lehigh, whatever it might be. Um, and you can find this. I actually uh, found this on Redfin. Notice I made it really, really small because who wants to give Redfin a plug in a class? I don't. Uh -huh. um, and it showed uh, investor purchases are down 33%. Yet in by that time last year, Q3, there were $1.3 billion of sales. The median price was three twenty eight, dollars and a quarter of the homes bought in Tampa Bay were purchased by investors. A quarter of the homes. Do you know what that tells us? So uh, on national average, typically about 15 to 16% of homes sold are purchased by investors. That's like the national average. Tampa Bay, it is almost 20, a quarter, almost 25%. What does that tell you? It tells you a lot of things. Huge opportunity. People see this as a really great investment. It's an up and coming area. 20 years ago, Tampa Bay was like, ugh, and the bucks suck. I mean, there was really nothing, okay? <laughs> Uh, they were wearing orange and swashbucklers is bad, all right? Now there's amazing arts and um, just a very strong cultural in, in influence, regentrification of different parts of town. I mean, it is really a thriving, great place to invest. Um, it tells you that, look at the median price point, $328,000. That is a doable investment. And that's the middle. So you can find, so I did run, and I don't know if I hit them, yeah, I hid them. I started to put in some sample properties and then kind of to Dee's point, I was like, no, why buy the milk when half the milk, the cow, what's it called? How do you say that? Yeah, that thing. Okay. So I took in and I thought, oh, let's hire us. We'll look at it. And I also too, I had plugged this as an introduction. So, you know, I want to geek out and start, let's analyze properties. That's really not the best for like a beginning workshop. They're not ready for it, okay? Yeah, you're just kind of getting their appetite wet. So provide some local statistics. You can just Google this stuff and find it and put it in. Um, so then I, I'm kind of setting them up and I would say, okay, so why would you even want to do this? Why is this important to you? So flip over in your packet to uh, page number seven for the participant. I really enjoyed this section because I felt like I got to know the people in the room a little bit and I walked them through. So I would advise you do, do yours beforehand. Okay. And I walked them through this. So I'll share with you what I wrote. Why do you want to invest in real estate? And you'll ask them, Hey, take a second and jot it down. So I wrote to build wealth. Then you say, well, why is that important to you? Because it's not the money for me. It was choices. Well, why is that choices so important to you and I said you know what so that I can spend more time with my family that's ultimately what it means okay if like things go crazy and I'm like forget it all let's retire and go to Bora Bora me and the kids on paddle boards okay that's what choices means um then what does that mean to you time off through leverage so in every company that we own we now have people who work there that that create the greatest amount of revenue. It's not Jared and I anymore. 
Okay. Um, that's what true business ownership is, which gives us leverage through time. Um, ultimately, what does that mean to you? So some people are like, why do you keep asking the same question? It's not the same question because time off through leverage means to me that on my deathbed, I'm going to have no regrets. Yes, I am a highly successful businesswoman, yet I was at my daughter's chapel yesterday morning and I'm going to be on her field trip Thursday afternoon. You can have both. And I don't want to pick one. Okay. I don't want to pick because if I did, it'd be my family. I don't want to get to my deathbed and think, wow, I built all of this and my four kids don't want anything to do with me. Okay. Um, so that's what it meant having no regrets. So the bigger we build this, the more leverage we have, the more time. So really walk people through this. And I think in a smaller group, you'll get to know each other pretty well, especially in person. All right. Um, so we walked through discovering your big why. Then we walked through kind of the hierarchy of this. Um, on, it's on uh, page number seven at the bottom. And it's basically big goals is like the power. Okay. Then your models is like the roadmap. So your goals is your big engine. Okay. Think of a car. Your uh, models or your roadmap. I've got a short-term rental model I can share with you. My friend Adrian can share his flip model with you. By the way, all of those are in here. Short-term rentals, not so much because they weren't really a thing. Um, yet there are so many different investing models. That's your roadmap. And then lastly, the habits is actually the vehicle. Okay, it's you driving and making it happen. Um, here's a conversation that we had that was kind of fun. I said, what do you think is the first habit I'm going to bring up to be a successful investor. By the way, you're having them fill in the blanks as you go, okay? What, what do you think was the habit? This is a great conversation in class. Ask them. It's not sexy. And the answer is not written anywhere. Right? What's your standard? All right, it's budgeting. It is living well below your means. Uh, write down this book. If you haven't read it, The Richest Man in Babylon. Jared and I read that very early on in our professional days. Um, so much so that we taught Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. How many of you have taken Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University? Oh my gosh, we have got to teach this at the Market Center. Um, it got us from hundreds of thousands in debt to having a positive net worth, okay? Dave Ramsey's Financial uh, Peace University is the first thing. Um, and then the second thing is, in, in that class, he teaches you how to live within a budget, okay? Um, so much so that we sold two brand new cars that we owned. We had massive car payments. We were newly married, putting things on credit cards, and we had a $500 car payment. What? What, what is happening here? We were living, you'll see in a second, it's called a uh, big hat, no cattle. Um, we had all the things and yet we didn't actually have any assets, okay? We didn't, big hat, no cattle. Um, we sold anything that we literally could sell. We sold the cars and got beat up cars. We sold a hot tub that we had like a freestanding hot tub. We sold, oh, your phone is here. I've been answering. We all have been talking about <laughs> Um, so kind of give it some plug for budgeting because you're not going to ever get to work with investors if people can't manage their money. Okay. I mean, yes, they can do HELOCs, home equity lines of credit or things like that. Yeah. You want to teach them how to build real well, not just leverage their primary residence. Yeah, Amber, I mean, that's a, that's a great book. Well, I think it's some of the stuff, but also a millionaire next door. Yes. And they have one for teens. Yes. I highly recommend that. I have a book where I could read that as well. So it's very similar to what I see. The one for teens? Yes, Millionaire Next Door for teens as well. Oh, okay. Millionaire yes. Next Door. So I mean, it puts it in their language, yeah. but it, it's so, it's such an important thing, especially younger. I haven't done the teen one. We gave the Millionaire Next Door um, out as a closing gift. Uh, for some of our um, real estate customers. And that's where you will read the janitor, the teacher, the whomever that became a millionaire um, through investing, whether it's real estate or what. So. Uh, 
So my husband and I met, okay, we, we dated when we were like 19, 20, 21, 22. We took a little break. Then I moved to Boston and then I moved back to Tampa and I moved back. D, he had the bachelor pad of bachelor class. He had a $20,000 hot tub. And I was like, honey, like this is it. Nobody else is getting in this hot tub and I don't need a hot tub. <laughs> that was the thing. We need the cat. Sell it. That thing had TVs, waterfalls, all these things. Anyway, yeah, it was uh, it was no longer needed. <laughs> he bought the cat. Okay. <laughs> right? Does that make sense? Anyway, here we go. Um, okay, so then you're going to talk through, um, and, and I honestly think, so Dave Ramsey conversation, budgeting conversation, these are life-changing conversations. Jared and I would have a totally different life if it was actually part of our premarital counseling. The pastor said, you need to read this book because I can tell you about Jesus, yet if you're broke, you're going to get divorced over money. Well, okay, well, this is okay. interesting. Yeah. And it truly changed our lives so much that so we've taught the class quite a few times. Um, okay, so then we're going to talk about the power of leverage. Can I talk about that? Jerry's going to love that I told you. That's one thing that we never thought. <laughs> uh, okay, so the power of leverage, we're going to talk through how uh, investing in real estate is an able investment and then you're going to talk about um on their participant packet page number eight how it's accessible anybody can buy it, it it's appreciable it increases over time it's rentable improvable sweat equity uh the tax savings uh, that would be a great one to have a tax professional with you um because there were some questions on this and i thought hey i'm not a cpa i am not an attorney okay um, but it would be great for them to be with you. Uh, stable and then livable, it's the most able investment. So again, you're educating, you're teaching them. This is a great image and you have it on page number 10 in your packet. Page number 10, their packet, I should say. Um, and it basically, I said, hey, look at the starting cost of all those. Are they even? Yep. And I said, okay, the starting value. I'd say, how many of you would like a starting cost of 20000 instead of 100 And they all said, yeah, me, me. I said, okay, great. Then investing in real estate is going to give you the best deal, okay? Um, then we talked about, look at the line that said adjusted ROI. So let's work this math together. The return on investment um, for this real estate property, which by the way, on the page before that, it kind of explains all the math. I just want to show it to you though. Um, or maybe it's the page after one of them explains it. Um, so investing in real estate for a hundred thousand dollar house, how much did they have to put down? Yeah, they had to put down $20,000. Well, it is going to appreciate typically in an average market at 5% a year. So that hundred thousand dollar house is now worth Hundred and five. So you just got a five thousand dollar return on investment. Okay, so that's super exciting. You put down twenty thousand dollars to make five thousand. What's your return on investment? You got it. You have a twenty five percent return on investment. Tell me which stock options gave you that. Okay, and which stock options can you depreciate on your taxes? Can you, you know, take off the expenses, the management, okay? So it's so many different things. Then I told a really fun story. Do you guys want to hear about our Colorado investment? Okay, this is so fun. So uh, early baby investors, we went skiing. So here's where it explains it, by the way. It's their packet, page number nine. It's the page I skipped over. I walked for an example of a property that we purchased in Colorado. Uh, we were skiing in uh, Beaver Creek right before COVID hit. We're on the chairlift and we're looking at the mountains. And I said, babe, wouldn't it be so beautiful to own in Colorado? I mean, I grew up in Florida, like flat land is all I know, beaches. And so uh, COVID hits, the pandemic hits, we're all stuck at home, we're bored, we're dreaming. And uh, I'm doing this uh, online class and I'm presenting my listing presentation 
for 40,000 people who are on this club. So I'm doing the listing presentation and the person that I'm doing it with, uh, his name's Jake and he lived in Colorado. So I jokingly said, as we're practicing, I said, Jake, when am I gonna sell you a beach place? Tampa, Clearwater, where, do you, where, where would you like? Sarasota, who knows? And he said, well, when am I gonna sell you a place in the mountains? I said, funny you mention it. Last year before the world shut down, and he said, oh, I have the person you've got to talk to. And her name was Laura Cardin. She was an operating principal in, um, no, it's Colorado in the Rockies. It's her office. Yeah, it's in Summit County in where uh, Vail, uh, Breckenridge, Keystone, all those are in Summit County. And she, he said, oh, you've got to talk to Laura. He knows that. So knows the property. So we called Laura. Introduce ourselves, we start chit chatting, and she said, You know, I'm gonna find you something, and um, I'm gonna look for like an outlier, which is a rental property that's going to perform, outperform anything else. It might take me a little while to find one. And I said, Well, take your time. I love something that outperforms. She calls two days later. I found one. I was like, Oh, I thought it was gonna take you a while. She said, Nope, I found it. Um, and I said, Well, great, tell me about it. So she's telling me, Great, oh, well, what's the purchase price? It's a million eighty, or it's it's one point one million, and I'm thinking our personal residence does not cost one point one million dollars. Like I'm not buying an investment property for one point one million. And she goes, "Let me show you the numbers." So she starts showing me this property grossed one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year in short term rental revenue from the ski resort. When I started doing the backwards math, it worked all day from Sunday. I thought, well, let's buy a million dollar property. I mean, we've done crazier things. Here's where the fun happens, okay? Um, you are looking for a deal. Yes, you want to get a discount on the front end. That book will tell you this time and time again. Get 10 to 15% off in the front end, okay? Um, I wouldn't teach all of this on, in the class. This is just us talking. So we got a little bit off in the front end. We bought it for a million 80, okay? Then... The end of the first year that we owed it. So a million eighty, we put down twenty percent, and we put down two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars for the property. Okay, at the end of the first year, that property value had increased, but our area is very similar in Naples to one point five million dollars. So I'm doing the math to give this fun little example, and I thought I'm doing something wrong with math. No, the actual um, appreciation was 194%. I'm sorry, 194% return on investment in the first year. So then I ran year two, it jumped up. It really jumped to two and a half million. It's back down to probably 2 million right now. Uh, so from 1 million, our return on investment 216 to where we jumped to is a 426% return on investment in two years. Show me the stock portfolio, like where's the money market that we're gonna do that, okay? So having a fun story like that to share, like this is the possibility um, that, I mean, we changed our family's trajectory with just that one property. And sometimes you will say, well, isn't it risky? There's a direct relationship between risk and reward, okay? If we would have bought a $300,000 house in this market, it would, yes, it would have appreciated, it would have been amazing, yet it wouldn't have been, um, you know, quite that example. So is that a fun one? I'm happy I own that one. <laughs> okay. So we walked through this. Now, this is a really powerful conversation piece. This is a great social media post. Uh, this one right here, it is called the Money Matrix. It's in there on their page 11. Uh, that they're going to fill in. Basically, what I had them do was I had them draw a line right through the middle, the black and the blue, right through the middle. And I said, this is your money. Your money can either go up or your money can go down. Your money can go up or your money can go down. And then I had them write next to the top where it says your money works for you. Look, there's my big hat, no cattle. That's you working for your money. I have them write these definitions. So I will tell you, I added this slide. It was not online. Um, and then I read right from the book. Uh, page number 89 gives these definitions. And I think they're really important.
Because if you don't understand what capital is, what cash flow is, what consumption really means, I think people can just kind of smile and nod. Yet this one picture explains our entire society right now. Most people are in the black. Okay, they're on the bottom half, which means what do they do first? I got the cars, I got the watches. Uh, my husband, God bless him, he works, he has like 94 jobs, he coaches the kids basketball, he does all the things, and he wanted a, oh, he'll kill me, some watch, some brand, not a Rolex, but like a, name some. Right. Maybe a bright one. Yeah, bright. I don't know. It was a lot of money. And he kept talking about this thing year after year after year after year. Well, we have been on the top half of this triangle for so long. The thought of spending that amount of money on a watch, when I'm like, hmm, we could probably pick up another property if I took three of those watches. That's the mindset of an investor. Like the thought of consuming that on a depreciating asset instead of an appreciating asset, like it did not compute in my brain. And so finally, when my brother said to me, Amber, you're in hole. You buy him the watch for Christmas for here. I was like, fine, I'll get him the watch. Because we have literally lived our whole life since the last 10 years on... How do we use money as capital for something, as capital to purchase an investment? And then after we have that investment purchase, then it's going to cash flow us some more money, okay? That we will then have an overage of money that whatever's left over, that little bit will consume. I mean, we have lived so far beyond our means. My husband was driving a Hyundai Genesis listing $50 million in a real estate year. Hyundai Genesis, because we would rather build our portfolio. I, we'd rather have all the cattle and have sunburns on our, our scalps. Okay, I don't want the half. I don't want the cattle. Okay. Um, anyway, walking through this really helps people without judgment kind of say, hey, this is the typical person. They work for money. They got to go to work. They got to have the paycheck. And if you can figure out how to live on the top side of the triangle, that is when um, you can actually create wealth, okay? Um, there are some really great stories. Uh, I would jot down page 88, 89, 90. Yeah, page 88, 89, and 90. I would jot those down in the book. Really read those before you teach the money matrix, okay? Hey, Amy. I'm going to get some, uh, oh, there were some handouts. There might be an extra. Okay. And look along, maybe we will help you look along with her. Or, oh, I might have an extra. Okay. We can share. Yep. And we only have a couple more and then we're done. Oh, we do have some extra. Super. All right. Here's where we flip through. And again, you're having them fill in the blanks. Okay. As you're going along um, at the bottom of page number 11, the equity buildup is what you see on this slide. So you're basically showing them, hey, the equity of the property increases as the market value increases. Look, that's your equity. Okay, that's your money. Then your debt is reducing. Um, we also talked a little bit, circle the word buy it right. This is where I said, you know, when you work with us, we're gonna help you find properties that have been on the market over 90 days. Properties that came out of the gate way too high price that are now vulnerable to an investor offer, okay? Um, we're going to help you buy it right. And Gary would tell you in the book, getting in the door 10 to 15% below market value is buying it right, okay? Then you have one part is equity buildup. The other part too is you have uh, your cash flow growth. Because the market value increases of your home, yet what also increases? The cost of the rent, okay? The cost of rent. And I will tell you, rents have exponentially exploded over the last two or three years, okay? Like wildly. Um, I was listening to a 2023 
uh, projection uh, and analysis of real estate uh, coming up on Bigger Pockets. Actually, that podcast, you can tell I love it. And they said, don't expect rent prices to continue increasing because we, we have to consider affordability. And they jumped up so much that we probably, like Jeff said in team meeting, we probably borrowed from growth from the future and pulled it into right now. Um, so don't expect maybe the typical rent increase yet over time as salaries and wages catch up, then yes, rents will continue to increase historically. They always do. Okay. So you, you're going to get equity build up. You're going to get cash flow. Okay. Then this talks about, again, why do people invest in real estate? There's no better vehicle in investing. You're, you're getting them excited about why investing in real estate is better than the stock market. Okay. Uh, this one is where you want to tell them page number 12 in their handout that you are not a CPA. Look, it even says consult your CPA or tax professional. Yet it walks through all of the savings that you have on your taxes. Uh, Jake, the gentleman that I was doing the listing presentation practice with, he owns 200 or more doors in Colorado. And I have the upper one in Florida. No, he hasn't yet. Oh. Oh, I don't do that. Uh, I held up my end of the bargain. Um, anyway, I said, Jay, make me feel a little bit better about myself. How much did you pay in taxes last year? I mean, we're pretty good friends. And he said, pretty much next to nothing. What? He said, Amber, you don't understand. There are so many tax savings in owning real estate that you don't even know. One, one I would write down is cost segregation. How many of you know about cost segregation? That is a great, like if you are in your peak earning years and you buy an investment property, here's the short explanation. You can take that depreciation that you would have over the lifetime of it up front to save a little bit on your taxes, okay? Yes, we just did a, we did a cost segregation on four properties this year and our tax savings was over $300,000. Like as in, I got to earn 300 grand that I don't have to pay taxes on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love supporting the government and four kids in private school is like having your own freaking government, okay? <laughs> anyway, so this walks through all the different write-offs that they can have. Um, then the next section, I'm not, we're really not gonna go into this. Um, oh, I did tell, if you have an investing story, stick it in somewhere, okay? Um, we do not appear as these bright, intelligent people. So I think you give people a glimmer of hope when you say the average house and school teacher can invest in real estate. And here was our journey. And it didn't start until June of 2017. And here's the funny thing. Uh, and I said, just like you're in a class to learn today, I was on a phone call in 2016, 2017 about investing in real estate. And a gentleman um, named Jimmy McKissick said, uh, so what, what type of property are you thinking about? And I said, Jimmy, I'm not really sure. And he said, well, would you ever consider buying another house and renting out your primary residence? And I said, I don't think so. It's a waterfront home. And he said, well, why does that matter? People don't rent on the water. And I said, I don't know. And he said, how much is your mortgage payment? I said, it's about $1,700 all in everything. He said, what do you think you could rent it for a month? I said, probably $4,000. He said, Amber, go buy the next house. Do you have cash saved up to buy the next? Sure we do. So we made our primary residence our very first rental property. And I remember calling him back and saying, Jimmy, they want to pay two years cash up front for $3,600 a month instead of $4,000. Should we do it? And he goes, all day long. So literally those people gave us a check for like 80 something thousand dollars. It was mind blowing. And uh, anyway, he, he is one of the people in this book, by the way, I mean, because I guess. So here's our little journey. Those are all short-term rentals, except for obviously the first one, uh, which we've leveraged some of these to buy other ones, okay? Uh, Fast and Furious, Indy Rocks Beach, Keystone, I told you about Colorado, Little Gasparilla Island, God pray that that house will get back up and running, uh, three in Sky Valley, Georgia, and then we just bought another one in Indian Rocks Beach in July. Uh, here's the proven systems. There's a lot of detail on the pluses 
uh, the pros and cons of buying condos, single family, duplexes, and fourplexes. So you're just going to walk them through. Pros, cons, no judgment around them, single family, duplexes, and fourplexes. And then they have this on page number 13, and then page number 14. 13 and 14. Then we moved into, um, and this is all at the bottom of page number 14 is know the value, find your opportunity, and then make deals, which by the way, sells you over and over because you're going to help them know the value. You're going to help them make the deals. Okay. Uh, then we walked into mortgages. I added a couple on here using a HELOC because it wasn't on there. Um, you know, what to expect, what not to. This is when I had Jamie, the lender, speak a little bit. Um, I'm going to have Jamie come down and do some classes here. He's helped us buy all of our investment properties. He's phenomenal. Um, so we talked a little bit of financing. And then we talked, do you manage it yourself? Or do you find a property manager? Do you know the right answer? There you go. The good news is there is no right answer. Um, so Gary would say self-manage on properties one through four, you can handle it. It's not that much if they're long-term holds, okay? Um, that they, you have a long-term tenant, 12-month uh, lease in place. Uh, you can manage up to four on your own. Here's where I would also push back and say, if the numbers work, and you're a really, really busy person, and you can make more money selling real estate to invest in the next one, and the numbers work, then use a property manager. Okay. I do for my short term and use a property. I, I don't want to run around this point with text messages. Yeah. But for the annual, you sign a lease that you will hopefully forget about them. Yeah. And with the one that you're like, because all your ones are far away, do you do a year? So you guys, um, how many of you have met my assistant Angela on meetings at ODS? So um, I have a virtual assistant who lives in the Philippines. Uh, her name is Angela. She's been with me for plus years. Angela, are you on here? No, she asked me. Angela. Hi, it's Patricia. Oh, hey, dear. Okay. Um, I said, she said, do you want me to be on with you today? I said, you are Patricia. She's like, she's constantly thinking for me. Um, anyway, she manages our eight properties. Um, she does all the marketing for them. She does all of the, um, like she keeps the database for them. Now, in Colorado, we have an on-site person. And then in Sky Valley, Georgia, we have one on-site person. Yes, she manages Little Gap Gorilla, both Indian Rocks Beach, um, like all aspects. Plumber calls, all that, they call her on me. And she's a VA in the Philippines. You can be creative, I promise. Um, and then that was it. <clears throat> Next steps, read the millionaire real estate investor. What a great time for you to give them the gift of the book. Um, talk to a mortgage professional um, about financing and then you set an appointment with them, okay? And then truly you open it up for Q&A, questions and answers. And then this is what I did online. I broke them into if you're a realtor and want to do the class, if you have financing questions or if you would like to buy. And um, that was really it. With, um, with the book, with the online so um, the people that went to breakout room three, my husband and two of our agents were there and they made sure to jot down their information, which was already on the sign-in sheet. And then we sent them the gift. Yeah. yeah. So what questions do you have? Thoughts around this? I actually missed the beginning of it. So how did you set up the meetings? Is that the future? Yeah, so I recommend doing it in person here. You <laughs> leverage this office, okay? You are more than welcome to host an event here. Just let the front desk know, Maria, we will block the room for you, all that good stuff. Um, I would advise doing it in person so that you can like talk to people, get to know them. I did it on Zoom because I knew a lot of realtors would benefit as well. And just, you know, I wanted to help people learn how to give the class. Um, so what I did was social media post a week out, oh, two weeks out, a week and a half out, then the week of every single day, um, I created a Facebook event for people to sign up. So I kind of had an idea of how many people were on there. And then the Zoom, you actually had to register for the Zoom. So that was another way of getting their info.
but you would do it in Facebook just to get the uh, in person. Yes, yeah, still free at the event, um, all that stuff to get them in person. And uh, Freddie, this right here, the the like non sexy packet explains every detail of how to set it up. Okay, what other questions do you guys have? But, um, so your properties, are they all like property single family? Okay, so here's our strategy. We do single family uh, properties in a no HOA. Do not like the Karens, okay? Um, I will tell you, we are moving away from short-term rentals because I don't have time to be on every city council meeting. These are homes, not hotels meetings. I mean, I'm on all these things now because we obviously have a lot invested in short-term rentals um, and there's a big fight over them, a big dispute. I don't want to get in the dispute. So we are moving into long-term holds. Okay, 12 month uh, rentals. So ours are single family, no HOA. Uh, we like properties that are new-ish, okay? I, I want some age on them so I can hit them you know, and, and get that value on the front end. Um, yet I don't want to, I don't want to replace a roof. I don't want to do big stuff like that, okay? Because that's, for me, the faster I can get it up on VRBO, the faster we make money. And um, I've learned this along the way. Georgia, those three properties took almost a year each to turn around. Now, I saved a lot of money on my taxes, yet it wasn't fun to not see that income because I didn't have control. Uh, people in Georgia are on a different time frame yeah. or universe or planet or something um, than, than we are here. So uh, that's our investment strategy. Uh, yeah, we are moving more to now. Uh, we like three twos or four twos. And the biggest thing for us is that it is in a great school community. And you literally have to be able to see the school within a mile. Like, because you know borders, lines change. We've seen this in Collier County. School, school boundaries, they change. Um, so we like to find um, you know, distressed properties that we can get some value in up front, put a little money into them to make them pretty um, in a great school neighborhood. Okay. Those will be likely HOA properties though. But 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 not you were already signing your summer with a family with kids. Uh, yes. You got I mean, you know, here I think here is more older people. Mm -hmm. So here is mainly like that closer to the beach. Yeah. Yep. Question for you. So like in 2023 now with the uh with things that's maybe flood mapping. Mm -hmm. So thinking about like say 20% down, things like that, you find a place that anywhere, you know, kind of uh west is gonna get you closer to the floodplain. So What's what's your thoughts around that in regards to because if you do have a mortgage, then obviously that could be almost another tax payment or someone someone close to that. Thoughts on that? So our place on little for everything that we do, we're just looking to the numbers work. Does it cash flow us what we need? So on our short term strategy, we have to be positive after every expense. Um, after our insurance, so Little Gasparilla Island, our homeowners flood wind. It's ghastly to think how much money we pay in insurance. Um, flood insurance for a house that is 20 feet up in the air. It's on stilts, like it is huge. Now we built the bottom level, yet even the bottom level is seven feet above sea level, okay, or eight or nine, I don't know, it's up there. Um, so for us, we're just looking at is the all in, our total nut, okay, for everything, can we pay that with seven nights of average rental income? Because I know no matter what season we're in, no matter what's happening, I can rent that house for a week a year. That's what it was. Now I'm up to more like nine days, okay, because things are getting more and more expensive. Yet for us on the short-term rental side, I can, if I can be positive cash flow with nine rental days a, week, a month, then I'm going to go for it. Okay. Yeah, and we're also now in the place where because of the number of properties that we have, we're having to put 25% down, um, not the 20%. You have most people that you have in this. Uh, they might even, set second homes, they've really cracked down on the second home. We, we started at 10% down. Um, that, that's really hard to come by now too. Sure. Do you do 15 years or 20? We do 30. That's yes, I want the maximum spread because I'm betting on appreciation. Somebody else is going to pay it. And 
there's two phases in being an investor, okay? The first one is acquisition. Like Jared and I are in acquisition mode, like literally every day, what can we buy next? What can we buy? How can we leverage money? What can we buy? What can we buy? So we're going to get into a place and we know our target number of properties, okay? It's really the value of them that we're aiming for. And the goal is to get there as fast as possible. Once we own that number of properties, then we're going to be in debt reduction or payoff mode, which will be, okay, last month, all of our properties, we were positive $30,000. We're going to start paying off um, extra to get the principal down until we own them all free and clear. And then it just like starts raining money everywhere. Like trees are throwing it. <laughs> so, you know, Catherine Raymond, that's her class, that she usually puts 20% down with 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, and I wanted to ask her that question, you know, why? You know, and ask you want to ask her? Probably, well, but, but probably the question is looking forward to that raining. Um, yes, uh, she, um, uh, she, and I could be off. She put like thirty five to forty thousand dollars a month in like net thirty eight thirty eight thousand. Okay, net. So I mean, she's a good friend. So sometimes we'll talk. She's like, "Why are we even doing this?" And I'm like, "Well, honey, you have a different net every month than I do, so I know why I'm doing this." And she, because she just bought every um, commercial property, investment property. We so the reason I we own in Sky Valley is she owns up there. And she said, my husband will tell me if I buy another one. Do you want to buy another one? And so she kept sending me all these properties. So we share a property manager up there. Um, yeah, she is definitely risk uh, averse, okay? Um, I like to spread it out completely. She is, um, how do I say this? Like, she's cheap, okay? Like she wants, she wants to, she doesn't want to pay as much in interest. She wants to like, I mean, she's like, oh, I negotiated our um, property manager down another this, this, and that, go after him. I mean, she is constantly, every little penny she's adding up. So I would think that's probably it. So she can pay it off and be done. We just think more on the leverage side, okay? Like how, how can we leverage the max? Because if I'm doing a 15 year loan, my payment's gonna be a lot higher. Can't buy the next one because of my, my money is going to pay that mortgage. So, so you're getting out of short-term rentals, long-term rentals, and this can be the same location, but you're going to go further. In. So we're looking for um, the holds that we're going to do are in Tampa near us. Okay, just because we're familiar, I know the schools, I know the areas. Um, I don't know if I would buy. Here's the deal. Okay, so this is not this class. This is just us talking. When you go to buy investment property, you want to look at two things, okay? You want to look at appreciation, and then you want to look at cash flow. Some people just talk about cash flow. Well, my good friend Hudson Warren, he bought in a place in Georgia, and he spent like $96,000 on a single family house. Um, now, it cash flows about $400 a month, which is great. Somebody else is paying your mortgage. Hey, when one of those kids goes to college, sell that thing and give them $100,000. That's awesome. Yet I'm looking for the double whammy, okay? I'm not going to ever buy just for cash flow. I want to know the place that I'm buying in also has massive appreciation. So massive appreciation markets are like Tampa. Yet in Tampa, um, even further, you can look at some rings or areas. You guys see this down here too, um, like um, Ave Maria, Lehigh, like, like there are bands. There's an urban city center, then there's your first band, your second band, third band, and your fourth band. So I would say, how many of you are familiar with Tampa? A little bit, okay. So here's like downtown Tampa, okay, like South Tampa, like this is the most expensive, okay? Then you get a little bit more on the fringe and there's a lot more um, urban. There is um, still some like distressed properties. You can get some great deals betting on regentrification, okay? That, that money is gonna be coming in culture, arts, uh, investing, high rises that are gonna raise prices. Here's a great thing to look for. If you can find a uh, three to $400,000 house 
And then you see new home construction builders building for a million within a couple of streets. That's the areas you're looking for because that's where appreciation lives, okay? Um, so for us, because we are very settled, our kids have more years, we have you know another kid that's gonna be home for 10 more years. Um, we are looking, so then this is where you're starting to get into, um, the suburbs are like really right in here, okay? So you're starting to get into like the urban suburbs and this is really the burbs, okay? This is like Brandon, like it's kind of further out. Now this would be what I would call like Zephyr Hills or Lakeland. Lakeland is a hot area, okay? Uh, Lakeland is literally smack out in the middle between Tampa and Orlando. Like it's right in the middle. So Lakeland has had a ton of money, a ton of jobs, Amazon fulfillment centers. Like you can see it is it is growing, okay? This is where we are looking to invest. Yeah, for the long-term holds. But here's the issue though, finding great schools in these areas uh, can be a little bit more challenging. So you might have to get really knowledgeable on charter schools and magnet schools and different school options. Um, yeah, there's a massive amount of, of appreciation. Okay, not so much in this area. So like there was a fourplex that I found in South Tampa, which is very desirable, uh, 1.4 million, 1.3 million. Um, it brought in like 11,000 a month. Um, and a lot, a lot of times people talk about the 1% rule. Do you know what the 1% rule is? If you can get, I jot this down, okay? If you can get 1% of the purchase price in rent, then it's a good investment. But it used to be 2%. It just means that they changed the one. Well, and guess what? Now they're saying that if you can get 0.07 or 0.08 in an area that you know is going to appreciate, then do it. Because I'm like, 1% of. Yeah, Catherine and I just talked about this last week. I was like, Catherine, where are you finding one person that I'm not? Because I threw the four flex at her. That's the other thing too. If you want to be an expert in investing, find friends that are also interested in it. We throw things back and forth. She sharpens me. I give her different things to think about and it, and it helps you learn. So um, that bigger pockets, uh, 2023, like real estate forecast, that's a great um podcast to listen to it only came out uh, somewhere in the last month it talks about new real estate agents okay or new to us it talks about supply and demand how interest rates affect it talks about there's like really five factors that affect the real estate market and it outlines them in detail you could walk in and be d on a listing appointment because you're going to know your details so much let's try that she's like oh let's try that <laughs> So the properties we have now that we're doing in Virgo, can you keep those in Virgo? Yeah, we're going to be teaching them to sit like that. So those are like different areas. But those areas are part of, also part of like going from short-term rentals to long-term rentals is it's just, based on their area too. Well, and it's time and headache. Okay, the short-term rental battle, I think is going to be everywhere. Um, so Angela sends me our performance every single month. And... Um, so like one of our rentals last year brought in like $142,000, um, Another one, Colorado, brought over $100,000. Um, our Georgia ones, they were all like in repair and up and coming, yet those are even bringing in two, three, four, seven thousand 7000 in a month, depending on what time of year. I'm still learning Georgia, okay, the verdict's out. I I can't stand how people move so slowly. <laughs> that's after, after uh, that's it. That's my net. That's, net. that's my um, I'm sorry. The Georgia two, three, six, seven, that's my net. The 140, that's my gross. Thank you. I'm sorry. I should have clarified. Um, Indian Rock Beach was our first short term rental. We paid 400000 for it. We owe about 300 on it. It's worth a million now. We put a pool in, we paid cash for the pool as we went. Um, and that thing runs out for five ninety nine million. Look how well the pool is. He is a big investor too. But yours all I know, right? Okay. 
long term. Mm -hmm. And I manage that. So you can teach me. And I can teach you the short term, term takeaways. <laughs> Yeah, you know, in the short term business, we are a customer service business. I mean, I had my phone light up and it said Instacart is on the way. And I was like, I didn't order any groceries. So I click on Instacart and it's Angela sending uh, ice cream, sprinkles, a pool toy, and something else. You know, because when people get annoyed, ice cream can kind of solve everything. So we send them a little care package. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's the business we're in. I mean, if the AC or it floods or you're up in the middle of the night, that's the business. I think it's the risk and it's just your rental property. <laughs> and there is no front though. <laughs> what other kind of tools do you have? Bigger pockets. Bigger pockets. Yeah, bigger pockets. And the episode was just recently done and it was like the 2023 forecast. What do you think for people that want to like invest in property down around this area that want to use it as a place for them to come? Like, you know, you have a vacation, maybe, yeah. maybe a month or two, or maybe several times a yeah. year for a few weeks, and then rent it the other times that they're not. I think it's great. Right. That's I mean, you just have to look at regulations, you know, if you can make any pink corals, you still have great prices. For higher season, um, you know, Naples move. I think what you know, the count is like a number of years. Okay, but those properties are like they could do it to where they're where it's at least paid for them, paying for it. They've given them in a sense, yes, free vacations in the sense of like you got maybe making a little bit of money. It could be their future uh, retirement, and yet they're going to have all this appreciation over time. What other question? <laughs> I'll prove to my husband that I actually worked with that. Uh, who has a question? Okay, who's going to actually hold this seminar? Oh, so great. So I'm like at a 30% conversion ratio. Well, I'm willing to I got to get there. Well, there's that in Nemo's basic. And you literally get a lender, okay? Get a lender. Get somebody to partner with you. It is really just getting somebody excited. And maybe it's a long-term deal, partner with Freddie and he can help you look for different investments or see something, partner up on the first few, then you'll feel comfortable. Yeah. Well, I'm not excited. Good. I actually went to an investment um, uh, not seven but like a bar thing. Mm -hmm. um, after the yeah. Yeah, they uh, so have to try to get the actual. I mean, they want to get information too. Some of them were wholesalers, some of them were But you know what's interesting? I used to go to the um, forum house every Thursday when you know the product was like between 2011 and 2012. I used to go to every single one, and not one real person. No, no. That's what I'm talking about. That's a place where they're going to be. Yeah. You know? I, I'm a certified financial planner, so we're always looking for ways to cross this. Yes. Right there. Right there. Um, so my husband is in the, uh, has been in, some of you might know, the fire department for 22 years. And they have always had this rule that allows him to pay people to work his shift. He has to go twice a month. Um, well, he's accrued so much vacation and sick time that he really only goes like once a month. Well, they're changing those rules and they're requiring sweat hours, okay? They actually have to be there. So he's retired from the fire department. So we're going to have a really nice little, uh, you know, his pension, okay? Um, that we're going to transfer into an IRA and we're meeting with our financial team just in the last few days. You probably know this. I didn't know this. So that, well, no, this, there's a person in Tampa that is a real estate IRA custodian. Do you know what that is? Oh, there you go. I didn't either. So I have a meeting with this person. You can take, so so like here, here's an example. We're going to have about a million dollars, okay? And I'm, I'm like, 
can we just take the penalty and start investing in some real estate? Or what are we doing? And so he runs all the numbers. And he's like, well, look, over this many years, I'm going to turn it into like something like this. I was like, no, no, you don't understand. Like I did that in like a year in Colorado. So I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. And he said, well, there is something. And you can take that money that's in a self in an IRA and you can work with a IRA real estate custodian that will help you take that money and literally purchase properties for cash. Then the IRA owns the property. So like, let's say you are renting it and it makes $300 a month uh, cash flow okay, after everything's paid. That three hundred dollars goes back into the IRA. You still do not get to touch it until you are fifty nine and a half. Okay. Yet I can have that money from the IRA purchasing real estate. Let's say five years from now, it's done all this appreciation, and a two hundred thousand dollar house is now worth four hundred thousand dollar house. I can sell it and pay off the note, and then I'll have three hundred thousand that I'm adding back into the IRA. Like it is amazing. amazing. I'm like, so and I, I kept saying, like, so then I can buy a property. He goes, No, the IRA can buy the property. <laughs> I was like, and then what if we had cash flows? He's like, no, you don't get to care. You're not gonna touch any of the money. <laughs> no matter what you ask me a question, there's no way to actually get to it. Yet you can use that money that seems like it would be locked up. If you don't want the growth of the market, the, the uh, investing market, like you can invest in what you know, which is real estate, and watch that grow. So, more on that later. Wow. Okay, your hands up. A lot of it. Well, I'd be paying taxes on this. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting how you do your tax record. So. so, you shouldn't see the tax record. Yeah. Oh, the IRA will have tax I, I will not. Be I will not. No, the IRA will have tax um, right. It was interesting. I walked through. I said, so listen to me for a second. So this is a financial advisor. He was probably ready to pull his hair out. I said, in theory, let me walk you through this example. In five years, I could take that property and I could grow it to this. And I would only owe this. And I said, in, in the market, pull up your 20-year projection thing. I said, I'm going to outperform what you're projecting here. So doesn't this make sense? And he said, yes, but I know this a lot better and you know this a lot better. So this is the projections I can give you. I cannot on this. I said, so that custodian person, can I have his contact information? Yes, you can. Anyway, so there's all kinds of options. It's getting, um, do you know how we found that financial advisor? Uh, Gary and Nikki Ubaldini, they own Keller Williams, South Florida region. Like literally every, all 37 offices from Tampa down to Key West, they own the territory that the franchisee purchase them, purchases them from. Um, if you want to know how to become wildly wealthy, ask the wildly wealthy people, who's your financial advisor? Who's your financial planner? Who, who's your CPA? Gary, you both need literally text my husband. Oh, this is who we use for this. This is who we use for that. You just gotta ask. Ask and you shall receive, right? So, anyway. My TED talk is over. <laughs> I'm here if you guys need anything, okay? All of this is on kellerinc.com. You're welcome.